It's a border conflict that's causing nervousness around the world. If Russia invades Ukraine, will other powerful nations be compelled to send in their forces? For now, despite ongoing Russian military exercises, fears of all-out war have eased. Or have they? Here's Masa. Talks of an invasion, a show of military force and the potential for global conflict. This was the scene in Eastern Europe this week. But actions speak louder than words. We have to be ready each day and it, it began not yesterday. Every major news network has covered the standoff between Ukraine and Russia. And while there's a lot of uncertainty, the one guarantee is that the repercussions of these war games will be felt across the globe. This is a throwback to the old uh, era of big power politics and uh, the opportunity costs for having this crisis are very, very high for countries like South Africa. In recent weeks, more than 150,000 Russian military troops moved within reach of Ukraine's borders. This is the biggest concentration of forces in Europe since the Cold War. The buildup of military forces is an alarming development considering that Russia has already invaded Ukraine and seized its territory. Professor John Stremlau specializes in international relations. In 2014, the people of Ukraine rose up, had an orange revolution, and then Putin broke the rules by annexing Crimea, plus the fact that there is a insurgency among Russian peoples in the easternmost province of uh, Ukraine. And that's where we are. These visuals released by the Russian Defense Ministry show active operations in full swing. Alexander Arafiev is the Russian embassy's press attaché in Pretoria. I mean, those visuals of the troops are just daunting. These are the only visuals of the troops of conducting military exercises. If any other country conducts military exercises, that's fine with Russia. Why is not fine with everyone else when Russia conducts military exercises? But it is seen as a sign of intimidation. We don't care if it, see, if it seems like it. If someone sees it as a threat, it doesn't make it a threat. Western governments disagree. The intergovernmental military alliance between a number of Western countries and North America, NATO, is gearing up for a worst case scenario. We have already enhanced our deterrence and defense with more troops, planes and ships and high readiness of the NATO response force. These steps are defensive. Although becoming part of NATO is a process that could take years, Ukraine is keen to join and Russia is not happy about it. Why would, why would they want to join NATO in the first place? But it's but, their but, choice whether they want to or not. No, no, it's the exact answer for security, security purposes. But it's their choice. Well, Russia has the right to defend itself. The whole world is waiting with bated breath for this imminent invasion. But for Ukrainians, this is nothing new. Paul Nyland is a political commentator who's lived in Ukraine for 19 years. Paul, thank you so much for agreeing to show us around. What's it like living there right now? It's just an ordinary day. The, 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 the threat of um, invasion is 350 kilometers from here. We, we know the threat. But at the same time, like we, we can't let that you know, change the way that we live. We, we, we're, we've adapted. Would you be ready should something strike? Any city where potentially uh, Russia might uh, decide to send an occupation army, there will be a civilian resistance. While Russia claims NATO is a direct threat to it, the organization denies this. NATO is not a threat to Russia. And we have no plans in a way to deploy uh, offensive systems in Ukraine. Lubov Abravitova is the Ukraine ambassador to South Africa. What makes Russia to feel themselves unsafe? No one is making a build-up on their border. And uh, the appearance of Ukraine on the map of the NATO doesn't bring, from my humble opinion, any threat to Russia. NATO is already close to Russia for many years. 
does it have a leg to stand on to tell you as Ukraine, a sovereign state, what to do? Russia want Ukraine politically, economically to control it. This is the main issue. There is a racial dimension to this that no one seems to mention, driving around like a, like a conquering colonialist. As the world weighs in, South Africa stays on the sidelines. In the Ukraine-Russia tension that is clearly being exploited by those hostile to Russia for purposes of once again unjustifiably extending spheres of influence, we urge calm and restraint. Not getting actively involved. This is a move that has not gone unnoticed. It's more a question of what South Africans think about their role in the world and who they speak for or against. At the moment, South Africa is the only liberal democracy in the BRICS, but it does owe it to itself to stand up for its values, I think. The world is interconnected, with Russia being a major global supplier of gas and petroleum. The economic cost of an invasion will reach far beyond its borders, and the humanitarian impact could be devastating to the region. A number of countries have called on their citizens to leave as tensions mount in the region. Yet Russia implies it's all been blown out of proportion. There is no invasion. There so is no invasion. this is all just hysteria that's been made up. Exactly. No one's looking for war. But yet, US and UK instigating. They say that Russia is going to invade. By Tuesday this week, Russia announced a partial withdrawal of its forces near the Ukraine border. While some footage of the pullback was released, not everyone is convinced. One of the important principles when, uh, <clears throat> when dealing with Russia is, is everything must be verified. If we look at their track record, uh, they, they, don't, they don't warrant our goodwill of taking them at face value. What Russia does in its own territory, that's Russia's concern. And some of those troops have been withdrawn. Some did not complete their objective yet, and they're conducting military drills. Subsequent satellite images showed that some Russian military equipment was moved, but it also appears that there is a new buildup of armored vehicles, helicopters, and artillery. Then on Thursday, projectile missiles were fired, hitting a kindergarten in the disputed eastern region of Ukraine. The suspected intention is to create a pretext for the two countries going to war. Is there a possibility that Ukraine would be willing to drop its plans to join NATO for some sort of a solution. Do you think it would be a good signal for all the world that under this pressure, militarily pressure, the country can give up their sovereign right to choose its way? Despite the so-called exercises on the ground, Russia maintains it's open to a diplomatic solution. Uh, we see that dip diplomacy is the best option for everyone. There is no such thing as Russia innovation. It's just absurd. But Ukrainians are still skeptical. If there is no invasion, immediately the threat of the invasion is going to uh, you know, rear its ugly head again. Putin's not finished with his ambitions in Ukraine. A sentiment shared by Western countries. The risk of an invasion is still high. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.